we know your story, Katie, mm. and, and we, we've heard about your, your journey from that terrible moment that we, that we just moment, that we've just heard. But we've never heard your side of it, Diane. How, how was it when you, when you first got that call to say that something had happened to Katie? Bit surreal, really. We didn't get a lot of information from the first call. It was just, you need to come to hospital, you need to come to a London hospital. Your daughter's been in a chemical attack. And that what doesn't does that really mean? exactly what does that mean? Mm -hmm. And they wouldn't give us any more information. It was just you need to come as quickly as you can. Yeah. So we didn't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. You know, we turned up at the hospital thinking perhaps you know she's got a, something a yeah. bleach or something. Like that. We just didn't know what to expect. So when we got to the hospital and they took us in to where Katie was, it was absolutely horrific. Mm -hmm. I never even recognised her. There was just this person. The face was completely unrecognisable. And I think then we probably went into a bit of a state of shock. Of course. We just sort yeah. of stood and looked at her. And we said, you know, is this, are you sure? Are you sure this is was Katie? Was Katie conscious then? No. No, well, she wasn't conscious. Yeah, because she, she didn't see And they your... were treating her, they were, you know, putting yeah. water, well, putting something on her face. And yeah. then they sort of ushered us out again. What was the first thing Katie said to you? Probably kill me. Oh. When she first came round the next day. She was, well, she was, she couldn't speak, but she was writing things and, she, you know, where am I, what's happened? And then one of the messages was, kill me. How, how do you cope with something like that? You don't really have a plan. You just do it. You go into autopilot, really, you just do it. You know, we had, we had great support. My husband is amazing. Mm. He really helped. Yeah. Your brother and sister helped. Yeah, The doctors did. and nurses, everybody <laughs> rallies around you. Yeah. You don't really have time to, to absorb it all really do you You're... no it's too it's like it's actually like a like you say living nightmare it's yeah. like being in a yeah. film and it's not really happening yeah. i think because i've only heard you know because some of this like you said i was in a coma unconscious mm. it's like when i went to write my first book i had yeah. to almost interview my mum and say fill in these massive blanks mm. for me because mm. i don't really know any of this i almost mm. think you've seen more than me and mm. it's been worse for you mm. because of all the drugs i wasn't aware yeah. of it you mm. know so oh, and yeah. diane throughout all of this you kept a diary throughout yes. the whole process yeah. didn't you at the beginning, it was just notes, you know, yeah. which operations she'd had, which mm. specialist she'd seen, what the outcome was, you know, when did she first start to speak? Because so many people were asking us questions. Mm. You know, we had the police around every day mm. wanting to interview her. Mm. We had friends and family phoning up wanting to know how she was. So it really was just a factual entry. But in the end, uh, the more and more I wrote, the more and more it became a sort of personal I was going to therapy ask you, for me. Yeah. You know? So you, you wrote like a diary. Mm. Was it every day that you wrote? Not every day. No, it was sort of perhaps weekly. Did some you, some did, of it was every day. You know, especially her operations. Yeah. Did Katie know that you were writing the diary? I don't think you did at the time. No, but it was but good you, for practical. You know, yeah. the amount of paperwork I then had to do for hospital and legal yeah. things. It was actually quite good practically as well. But but emotionally, mm. did there. There's something incredibly raw and personal about writing something down in a diary because you you almost save other people from the the, the journey that you're going through because you you don't want to upset That's them. Right. But That's you can write it down on a piece exactly of paper. Yeah. You've never seen these diary entries, have you? No, because I suppose they were never written for me. No, they were no. to offload and not it be was a burden. It's a sort of therapy reason. for me, really, because yeah. I'm not great at talking about things so it we, was we've actually therapy. got them here would you like to read them it's better for me to read it than you oh yeah i don't yeah. think i could read them <laughs> okay we, we've put them down we put we've, we've printed them out we've put them down just in front of you there okay. katie if you'd like to read them <coughs> okay i'll read i'll read an extra actually um i know i shouldn't let it get to me i suppose i'm too sensitive i know why she's shouting and yelling but my heart still hurts it feels so personal David says I get too emotional and that I need to stay calm, but it's so hard to see someone you love so much being so aggressive and in so much turmoil. I suppose at that time, that was when, because it was a drug-induced coma, so I was, like, having psychosis mm -hmm. and hallucinations mm -hmm. and all kind. Of, I actually remember a lot of the hallucinations and they seem so real, even though I can separate now yeah. what was a medical induced state of reality, yeah. but I was really aggressive, I think, mm. wasn't I? Mm. That must have been incredibly difficult. How do you cope with someone mm. who's being aggressive to you when you're trying when you're to trying love to them? them and, and... Yeah. and you just have to remember it's not a personal attack on you, it's just the situation that Katie was in. 
But that must have been it, like that. completely and utterly exhausting. Yes. Because there was, was no end in sight yeah. to this. Yes. Well, and they yeah. had to stay like an almost fake positive as well to try and yeah. keep me yeah. going. And, you know, it's, uh, that is it. It's draining, I mm. think, isn't it? But that's it? probably mm. when you came together as a family and yeah. lent on exactly. each other so much. Exactly, yeah. That that's you right. must be so grateful for your, your siblings yeah. as well. Yeah, I mean, I think when I meet anyone else in a similar situation, I always say it is that network. And if you don't have family, then it's friends, it's colleagues. But it is that people power. and. Everything that's happening recently mm. now, it's people coming together that, that helps people keep yeah. going and, mm. and stay positive. Mm. Don't you have nicknames for each other? Well, I, I call her Moth, Mothy Moth. You know, it's an abbreviation of mother, okay. and it's someone that's always flying around, getting involved in everything, and okay. taking chunks okay. out of your clothes. <laughs> <laughs> and now she actually uses it as her username on Instagram. <laughs> Yes. And what's Katie? We well, used to be Mossop, didn't Growing we? Growing up, yeah. yeah. And that was named after a witch that we used to watch on our cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we will gloss over those teenagers. Yeah. <laughs>